everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome to a wrap-up that I'm actually excited to film last month I feel like I just didn't have that many books that I loved in August but in September I think I found my new favorite book of the year so I'm really excited okay so in September I read 14 books and I read four manga and out of the 14 books two of the books were arcs which I think is really great because I don't read that many arcs and I'm really trying to read more but yeah let's get into all the books the first thing I finished like right when the month started was Waiting for Spring volume 13 this is the latest volume of Waiting for Spring Waiting for Spring is like my comfort manga at this point it's just it's so beautiful I can't believe there's only one volume left because I'm just uh, I'm gonna miss it but it's also gonna be a manga that I will read for the rest of my life I know there's a live action which I did watch and I thought was really adorable but I hope there's an anime soon because I would just like love this to be an anime the story is just so special to me I love these characters we basically follow our main character Mitsuki who has had trouble making friends her only friend that she ever made moved away and she's really shy and she's just been really unsuccessful and then she just runs into the four most popular guys in the basketball team and they become friends and there's romance the friendship the found family i just i love it so much seeing mitsuki come out of her shell is just so beautiful and just love it so much oh uh, anyway so i read it i gave it five stars like i can't wait for the last volume and i can't wait to keep rereading it then i read as death draws near by Anna Lee huber this is a historical mystery series and i think this is book six i'm not as interested in this as i was when i started reading them the first three books i think are my favorite actually i think this is book five the two main characters got married and now i'm just not as interested i don't know it's just like I feel like it's the same thing when couples get together in books too fast I just don't find myself as invested just because I like the process of them getting together more but obviously that's not what this book is about even though romance is a pretty heavy subplot this is a historical mystery series like I said about our main character Kira who has not had the best marriage and her husband is dead and she's like a pariah because of some of the things her husband did and she meets this lord detective so basically a detective who only deals with the problems of the wealthy and they team up to solve a murder and they just keep running into each other now they're married yeah i think i give this one three stars i thought it was okay i like these characters enough which is why i keep reading but i think i want to branch out and read some new ones because i do have some new historical mysteries that i want to get to okay i think i'll talk about both of these two together next we have the obelisk gate and the stone sky the stone sky i've literally finished yesterday and this i read like right at the start of the month but i'm gonna talk about them together because they are books two and three in the broken earth trilogy finishing the series has just compounded the fact that i just need to read anything that nk jemison writes because her mind is like a mystical magical place and i just want to understand even like one percent of it because i feel like these are going to be books that i reread and reread and just like study because i think i retained like maybe 60 percent of what was going on i don't know i just don't know how to talk about these books <laughs> you'll see a theme because there are a few books on this list that I genuinely don't know how to talk about but I think my favorite out of all of them is the obelisk gate but I think that's also because I was finally comfortable with the magic system with the world and the characters so I feel like if I go back to the fifth season and reread it that one might be my favorite it's just so interesting how everything comes together at the end of each book and in the stone sky or I feel like technically in the obelisk gate we find out who really is narrating the whole series and why one of the perspectives is second person and it just like blew my mind I just love the relationships I just love how everything comes full circle i just feel like i can't talk about book two and three without spoiling things but i'm so glad i have the series under my belt because i i just need to read anything nk jemison writes the writing is phenomenal i really love how she doesn't sit down and spoon feed the world to you you have to understand it by paying attention you have to use your own brain cells because she'll just throw you into a situation and she'll be like okay this is what we're doing now just deal with it and you have to deal with it both these books have the three main perspectives like the same perspectives we follow esun who is one of the perspectives in book one who is a mother who lost her child and is on a quest to rescue her other child who has been kidnapped by her husband and in this book we follow esun the mother and nasun the daughter i love both their stories in this i just feel like they're both finding their own communities no matter how toxic they are some relationships in this book just make me so angry but they're so realistic i do think nasun i mean i do understand the whole element of a child having to grow up in a world that makes them old for their age or just more knowledgeable for their age but i do think nasun did a few things that were a little too much for an eight to ten year old child but then again she would show herself to be so innocent so trusting and i just that's one like that's one was the character that i was the most frustrated at but also my heart hurt for her and i just i would highly recommend this i feel like the series is finally getting the buzz that it deserves but i just i can't stop thinking about it i'm so excited to read anything that nk jemison writes in the future as well as all her backlist 
Okay, are we ready to get into my favorite book of the year? If you follow me on Twitter, I would not shut up about this book on Twitter, so you probably know what it is, but I'm gonna need all of you, all 1,222 of you, you, to read The Sword of Kaigen by Emma Wong. I this is perfection in a book like I don't even want to talk about it anymore because I have a whole 40 minute is it 40 minute? I don't know like a really long reading vlog reading this book what is this hair doing this is another book that I'm just I can't I can't find words to explain how much I love this book it's just everything like I said everything I love just put into one book and I just I love it so much. Okay, our main <laughs> I'm gonna try to explain. So we follow our main character. We follow her in the present when she's a housewife to this really prominent family. And we also follow her in the past when she is a vigilante. First of all, I am an absolute sucker for a multiple timeline story. I'm planning a video where I talk about my favorite multiple timeline stories, but I just love seeing how a character changes. Like I love seeing two versions of a character in the present and in the past. And I just love going on that journey with them from point A to point B. It's like one of my favorite things in a book. And we get that in this book. Well, not as much because we mostly follow her in the present where she's like this demure housewife that, I mean, she's not demure, but like she pretends to be, like she is always silent. She has a really frosty relationship with her husband. Let me tell you, the journey I went on with Takeru, her husband, like I hated him so much. He was a sexist. He would really just not put any stock into what his wife was saying, even though she is the most learned person in their little village because she's actually been to see the outer world and because she went to school outside the village but I just the last 150 pages are so cathartic with his character just because I was so determined not to like him and then my my, my uh, I just okay and the magic system is so interesting you take an overdone elemental magic system but just explain it in a way that it just seems brand new I loved how while we were following mostly water users each person had a different way of using water that was personal to them and their families and it just when I tell you I'm in love with this book, like I'm so excited to read the young adult series, the Theonite books, even though I know that she's not writing them anymore. Like I think she wrote the first two books and then she, can you DNF a series? I don't know, like she's just not finishing that series. But I'm I'm just so, I'm, I joined her newsletter. I'm just so excited to read anything she writes in the future. This book shattered me and pieced me back together. It's just so interesting linearly just because like the main traumatizing element happens halfway through the book and then you get the other half to like, like I said, it's catharsis. You just get to see these characters deal with it and how they grow from their trauma and their grief. And I just, I would highly recommend this. I would highly recommend my vlog if you want to see me cry over this book at 4 a.m. Yeah, um, that, I feel like I could keep talking about this, but I don't want this to be an hour long, so we're going to move on. After reading Sword of Kai again, I needed a break. I needed to read something fluffy, something fun. So I picked up Daring and the Duke, which is book three in the Bare Knuckle Bastards series, um, which is a historical romance series by Sarah McLean. I've read the first two books. I think they're okay. The first two books are really similar, but I liked how this one was different. So the basic premise of this series is that we follow three siblings that were the bastard sons and daughter of this duke who was like terrible. Um, so there were four of them at the start and they were basically pit against each other for the dukedom. Obviously not the girl because she can't inherit the dukedom, but one of them betrayed the others and he's now the duke and they hate him. And that duke is like the antagonist of the series in the first two books are the bare knuckle bastards fighting him while also falling in love so in the first two books we follow the two brothers and in this book we follow the sister but the sister is in love with the duke they're not related so don't worry because it's, it's very complicated yeah i just wanted like a good hate to love villain romance situation because i just needed to cleanse my brain cells and it was really interesting i think i gave it four stars it was really fun i think this is my favorite out of the series just because i liked grace as a main character she's just like not afraid to get what she wants I just loved a woman with agency who doesn't care what anyone thinks about her. I just really liked her and I liked the redemption arc that our villain took. And yeah, I really liked it. Next, I finally finished my reread of The Foxhole Court with The King's Men by Nora Sakalik. I don't know, I feel like I built this up in my head because the first time I read this I gave it five stars, like the best, one of my best favorite books of the year. But, um, that is, it was better than the first two books for sure. I gave it four stars this time. I really enjoy these books. I'm gonna put it down because it messed with the white balance. But like I said, these characters are just so lovable. Like, as you finish the book, you just feel this withdrawal. I remember the first time I finished these 
books. I spent the next two days just like obsessively stalking Nora Sackowicz's Tumblr where she has like extras and stuff. And this time it was fan edits on YouTube. <laughs> but uh, it's just something about this book is just so addicting. I feel like with this reread I was a lot more critical about the language and like just the behavior and things like that. But also these books are like, I don't want to say guilty pleasure because I don't like that term. But also I just feel like they are. But yeah, I think this was the reread I needed because I started reading them last month because I felt like I was just hating all the new books I was reading. So I was like, let me just read something that I know is something I'm gonna enjoy. So I did and I'm happy because now I'm finally out of the reading slump. I don't know if it helped, but we're just gonna go with it. Okay, let's talk about some more manga. We have Shortcake Cake Volume 2 and Volume 3. This is such an adorable manga series. I give them four stars. Again, I rate manga pretty liberally. Sometimes you just need a classic shoujo manga to cleanse your palate. Like I said, the, most of the books I read are heavy fantasy and then things in the middle just so that I don't get, like my brain doesn't fry from all the adult fantasy. And I just love shoujo manga. The fluffier the better, the more tropes the better. Like this one is so fluffy. So we basically follow our main character who has moved into this boarding house because it's better than her hours long commute that she usually does to school and there she meets these two boys actually is it the same boy? no these are different boys she meets these two boys and um, there's a love triangle obviously I just love our main character she's not like most shoujo protagonists as if to say like she's really self aware and she doesn't drag on their like, obviously like so this boy has a crush on her so she doesn't drag it out in volume 1 she's like so do you have a crush on me? what's going on? and it's so much fun I definitely want to keep reading which is great because I have two more volumes of this and I know a bunch more are out, so I'm excited to keep reading. I recommend this. They're so cute. Next, let's talk about maybe my most disappointing book of this month, and that is Lost Book of the White by Sarah by Sarah J. Mass by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. I on hindsight don't think this series is my favorite. I think it's a good fluff filler book like at least I think I really enjoyed the first book because it was basically a Malik honeymoon fluff story with like some demon killing but this one I just think it's time for me to admit that I just don't care about the Mortal Instruments crowd anymore they had their series it's over now I gave it three stars like it wasn't bad it's not like a two star it's not I think I'm just feeling really disappointed because I was really hyping myself up for this I was just like okay this is gonna be comforting and I'm gonna love it because I thought the first book was so much fun it just wasn't I don't know if I'm getting more picky with my audiobook narrators but like I just desperately disliked the narrator for this audiobook obviously I like Magnus Magnus is one of my favorite characters I like seeing them with Max their son I like that this took place after what is the other filler Shadow Hunter Academy books I like that this took place after that because something happens to Simon. Simon is another one of my, like, at least I guess he was one of my favorite characters because I genuinely didn't care about him in this book. It was interesting to see him deal with his grief after that book. Other than that, I just wasn't interested. Like, this book took place in Shanghai, which I thought was interesting, but like, I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna read book three. I just... Pushing that aside, let's talk about a book that I really enjoyed, and that is Jade War by Fonda Lee. Everything book one did, this book just took it to a different level. This series just stresses me out. Like, I feel like I read a lot of high intensity adventure fantasy books with like high stakes, but I'm just like, okay, yeah, th th cool, this is happening now. We're doing this now. Okay, it's fine. Let's let's do this now. But with this book, I have to take breaks. I have to pause my audiobook or like close my book and just do breathing exercises because this book just freaks me out. Like it's. Uh, I don't know if it's just because I'm so invested in these characters like these characters are definitely my favorite thing about the book but also I just feel like it's the way Fonda Lee writes you just know something bad is going to happen because she just drops like subtle hints so like you're just waiting for the shit to blow the roof is that even the saying? I don't know. And then the characters have no idea and you're just like, please, please just run away. Please, please babies, just run away. And they never do because they're like strong and brave and proud and have honor codes. But I did love this a lot more than Jade City. I gave Jade City four stars and I gave this 4.5, rounded up to a five. Because I feel like some of the timeline stuff was just not my favorite. I feel like the timeline skips are a hit or a miss with me. I feel like either they're done really organically and there's nothing to miss in that timeline that would add to the story. But this one, I just feel like, and then six months, passed and this happened and I'm just like okay this book basically covers a huge chunk of time and some of the places like with Andon's storyline I do understand why the timelines were necessary and obviously if there's time moving for Andon it would move for the calls as well but whatever I just some of them were just a little 
Oh, okay. But this book was heartbreaking. So much more heartbreaking than book one. I think my two main characters are still Shay and Anden and Wen. Yeah, I love Wen. Wen just really stood out for me in this book. I just wanted so much more for Wen in book one because let me just like hurt all you Hilo simps. Hilo is a misogynist. He is a misogynist. The stuff that happens at the end of this book is because Hilo is a misogynist and doesn't really listen to his wife when she speaks. Like obviously he listens to her counsel, whatever. But the way the story just... Oh, my heart. When storyline in this book literally just broke my heart because the storyline of a wife figure or the girlfriend of this hero who is just watching by the sidelines because she doesn't have the magical abilities that everyone around her does because Wen is a stone eye so Jade doesn't affect her. She's considered to be unlucky, she's kept at uh, hands distance whatever why am i not saying any of these sayings right whatever when was such a standout to me because i love that story of her having that agency and thinking no this is my family if i can't help in the conventional ways i will forge my own path and she really does that if hilo was less of a misogynist she would tell her husband and they would do it together but i understand that that ending was so satisfying and heartbreaking obviously but also so satisfying because everything just came together this book is so good i can't wait for jade legacy next year literally i will die waiting for jade legacy like ha 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 okay it's fine we're we're fine we're doing fine i'm really grateful that all my friends are reading this book and i was like one of the last people to read it just because if i didn't have someone to scream to about this book i would have a lot of pent up trauma but i'm really glad like a buddy read this with nicole but even though she finished before me i had like nicole tammy and katie to scream to which i'm really grateful for because i feel like otherwise i would have died inside i'm still dead inside don't get me wrong but like i would have died inside with a lot more pent up trauma i don't even know what i'm trying to say so we're gonna move on the way i'm only halfway through these books let's talk about the first arc i read which was white trash warlock by david r slayton this was really fun i gave it four stars just because it's so interesting it just takes a lot of the urban fantasy tropes i feel like and just turns them on their head we have our main character adam who has to go back to his hometown to help his big brother and he's estranged from his family because he's a warlock and he's gay and both of those are just things that his family don't accept obviously there is a great magical storyline where he's being a warlock there's also a really cute romance which is a subplot but also i just love adam and vic so much but my favorite thing about this book was the family dynamics and how because we get to see from both brothers perspectives we get to see like there was this one event that happened in their past that basically estranged them and we get to see the perspectives of both the brothers and what happened and like it was so interesting for them like to slowly heal from that i should have known this was a series i don't know if i'm gonna keep reading just because like i said i like the romance and i like the family dynamics but i don't know if i'm invested enough to keep reading but then again this book hasn't even come out yet or i think it just came out so like i'm good i don't think the second book is going to come out for a while so we'll cross that bridge when we get to it next let's talk about another disappointment and that is the arithmetist by brandon sanderson uh, okay, I wanted to read everything that Brandon Sanderson wrote and I thought because I love Skyward I would love this But to me it was like abundantly clear that this book came before Skyward And I feel like if I read this before I read Skyward maybe I would have liked it more But it just fell flat for me after I read Skyward because there are similar elements in both books And I feel like it's done so much better in Skyward I want to tell you what this book is about but to be frank, I've forgotten. It was very mediocre for me. I feel like the magic system by the end of the book was really interesting. At first, I was just like, is this a flop magic system for me? Because the premise is like you draw these chalk circles and then these figurines come to life and battle each other. So, um, for me, it was like really hard to take it seriously when it was just like a chalk unicorn fighting a chalk dinosaur kind of thing. But it is really complex. The way most of Brandon Sanderson's magic systems are, there are diagrams. It's really interesting because our main character Joel is very similar, I guess, to Spensa in the way that at the start of the book he's on the outside looking in. He wants to be a rhythmist so bad, but he, for a reason, when he was a child, he didn't make it to the rhythmist trial, and because of that, he can't be a rhythmist. There was one part of this book where I was just like, I know this is gonna go in this direction, and it didn't, which is why I increased a star. I know he's not written a second book, but I would be interested to read the second book just because of that thing 
thing. But also, this book was a two star for at least the first 250 pages. And then the last little bit redeemed it for me because of that plot twist and also because they ended with like this kind of really satisfying tournament element. Like I said, I'm a sucker for tournament elements. And this one was just like, oh, yay. Like they're standing up to like this stupid bad guy. And like that plot twist, I'm not mad about. So three stars. I guess if he ever writes a sequel, I'll read it. But also I don't mind the fact that I think he's not going to continue the series. Sorry, Nicole. Then I read the newest volume of Daytime Shooting Star by Mika Yamamori. This is another manga series that I am caught up on. Like a new volume comes out every two months, I think. I feel like I talk about this in every wrap up because I'm always reading like a volume because like I said, it's coming out every two months, maybe a month. But I'm like super invested in this, especially because of like the last few volumes. Um, This is about our main character, Suzume, who moves from her rural town to the city and <laughs> I feel like I've said this so many times, but it's basically a love triangle. She falls in love with her teacher, but there's also this classmate who is the love of my life. I love him. So you can tell who I'm rooting for, A, because that, like, it's not glossed over the fact that that relationship is not okay, even though she has a crush on him and he likes her as well. But I think we're moving in the direction of the classmate and I'm just so excited. Yeah, but like this is again like such a fun story of friendship and like I really enjoy it. The next book is another one that literally I could not tell you the shit that went down in this book but also four stars. The Rune of Kings by Jen Lyons. This is another prime example of me being trash for a good multiple timeline story. This book is so complex and I love it. Okay, so we follow our main character Kieran. At the start of the book he is basically telling his story in a jail cell but his jailer also has her own version of his story. Like she's seen his story somehow like you'll find out how but like also it's so cool but also creepy but also you can't trust anyone <laughs> why am i like this but yeah so the jailer tells one timeline of his story from when he is a young boy 14 a thief and he comes across a scene that he shouldn't have seen and because of that his life has changed forever and in kieran's story that starts i think when he's 16 it starts with him being sold off at a slave auction so already you're wondering how he got from a 14 year old thief to a 16 year old slave to a uh, however old he is at the start of the book being imprisoned this is my kind of fantasy like yes i gave it four stars don't come for me but also it's just there are so many elements of this book that i'm so so intrigued about i need to read book two soon even though book two doesn't follow the same characters which why would you do that to me but yeah kieran is such an interesting character to follow and the magic is so interesting in this like literally anything is possible people are eating each other's bodies and taking over their bodies like people are just like randomly turning up to be gods it's just like insane it's like you're on a trip and you're just like what? Okay, well, that's what we're going with. Like, I just love it so much. And I want to keep reading, definitely, because I've heard that the books keep getting better. I'm just patiently waiting for the sequel to come to me from the library. But yes, Kieran is such an interesting character. Kieran and Tirade's relationship in this book was just... They're not even in a relationship, but I'm just like... Please, please, please give me this. I know there's gonna be a polyamorous relationship between them and then one of the characters in book two that was introduced right at the end of this book. So I'm just like really excited. And I know that that other character that was introduced is going to be the main character in book two and I already liked her. This book just ended on such a cliffhanger. I don't know what I'm doing not reading book two, but also I need the audiobook to make sense of what's going on because I genuinely will read the same page four times. Also like there are footnotes, which I know is a deal breaker for a lot of people, but I will say that if you like the footnotes in Nevernight, you'll probably like these ones as well because the narrator is pretty sassy and we meet him halfway through the book, which is really interesting as well. So yeah, four stars, really excited to keep reading. Next I read Un Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon and this was our book pick. If you don't know, I have a book club with my friends Katie, Tammy, and Sophia and the live show for this was on my channel, so you probably got a notification or if you go to my subscription like whatever my, my page you will see the live show i'll link it up above anyway i feel like with this book i was really out of my depth i mean i should have been expecting the subject material that it dealt with but also like really early on i realized that i have to be more objective with this book like i can't read it the way i read most of the books i read for pleasure but i just feel like this is one of those books that is definitely really hard to get through but like the conversations you can have about race and sexuality among many other things about toxic relationships this book talks about so much in like 200 ish pages i'm in awe yeah but definitely go see our live show for more thoughts because i feel like this is definitely a book that lends to discussion i think discussing this book 
was paramount to me understanding it because I was really like I'm still hesitant I don't think I want to rate this book because that's not what this book is about but I think definitely I understand this book a lot more after talking about it with my friends but yeah I'm actually really interested to check out The Deep by River Solomon I know Katie's read it and I know she thinks that it's their sophomore novel so I'm, I think they take what they talked about in An Unkindness of Ghosts and they build upon that so I do want to check that out in the future but yeah I'm definitely glad that I finally got to this because it was a really important read and there was such such an interesting conversation that we had on the live show and I feel like it's really helped me understand the book a lot better moving on to my second arc that I did didn't read before the book came out so I finished on audio and then I went and bought a physical copy because I loved it so much and it's Legendborn by Tracy Dion I don't think I've been this invested in a YA in a really long time and it just feels great because while adult fantasy takes up all your brain cells and you're just like wow that was so good shipping two characters is like so much fun and I missed that like shipping two teenagers who don't want to be together ah it's so much fun let me just put it out into the world I'm team Sel like Selvin Kane could step on me and I would praise his feet like I'm just I'm, I'm trash for this book at this point I gave it 4.5 stars rounded up to a 5 and let me just tell you that if I don't get my hands on book 2 ASAP like obviously I'm not going to because this book came out like this month I just wish I hadn't read it I mean I obviously I had an arc so I had to read it but I just wish I hadn't read it so early on because now I'm just like I'm a mess on the floor oh this book is so good I just feel like this book had everything that I loved this book had our main character infiltrating a white secret society that is basically the descendants of Arthur and their knights and through there she meets Arthur's scion Nick and you know like they fall in love I guess in, in a very YA fantasy way and then we meet Selvin who is like the dark horse kind of character that people are scared of and they hate each other so you can tell that I'm shipping them already because they hate each other Selwyn wants her gone Brie doesn't understand why he hates her but she's like terrified of him because his powers are basically memory like he can take away your memory but like Brie has her own agenda for being there because she is grieving the loss of her mother and she thinks that a Merlin took away her memories of the night her mother was dead and she needs to to find out why that happened and it's just ugh. the ending of this book was like phenomenal I was just like at the edge of my seat like just dying a little like I don't think I've been this invested like I said I've not been this invested in a fantasy in such a long time the way I went to the bookstore and bought a copy because I needed to annotate and I needed to like reread it before the second book came out my thing is that is this going to be the first book that gives us a polyamorous relationship in YA I'm sure it's been done before actually I think Strange Grace does it but like is this gonna happen are we gonna get a polyamorous relationship between Nick Brie and Selwyn like I I'm, I'm, I want it I have feelings I have so many feelings the way Nick Brie and Selwyn give me Adolin Shalon and Kaladin wives oh, I have a type clearly like the way I, <laughs> I have a type and the underdog character with their dark hair and just like a brooding attitude and like misunderstood and just like th those are my characters those are my characters but also Brie I'm so in awe of Brie I'm 100% team Brie because she just is a phenomenal character character it's been so hard for me since I've like grown I mean, okay I'm 20 it's not like I've grown out of the YA character range it's just been harder for me to connect to them because I feel like oh my god they're so impulsive and Brie is impulsive 100% but like the way her motives are explained and the way she holds her own like I feel like YA characters are very good like I can do this and then they in fact cannot do this because they don't have the training or whatever and Brie she holds her own there are times where she needs help there are times where she needs to be rescued but she just goes through such a a journey in this book and I just I'm so excited to keep reading the series I'm just happy this book makes me so happy but yeah infiltration like I said is one of my favorite tropes a tournament trial setting is one of my favorites a love triangle that I actually enjoy speaks for itself e do I have to talk about this I read Oliver Twist for school I didn't plan on matching my hoodie to Oliver Twist but that's what we're doing today I guess yeah I don't like it it was okay it's not the worst classic I've read but also I don't want to talk about it it is, it is 50 minutes long <sighs> it's fine I'm gonna cut it down somehow it's fine you don't need to listen to me gush about Legendborn for half an hour it's fine but yeah those are all the books that I read this month let me know if you read any of these books and how you feel about them and let me know if any of these books are on my TBR and if I sold them to you and let me know if you're gonna read them now especially if it's Legendborn and Sword of Kaigen because those are my two favorites of this year of this month if you couldn't tell I'm talking really fast for some reason I don't know why I think it's because I want this video to be over but yeah thank you so much for watching till the end all my links will be down below as well as the subscribe button and I will see you guys in my next video <laughs> goodbye